Namaste Asnani ji and welcome to all the viewers of uh, taking the talk talk show. We welcome you to the talk show and at a very short notice we uh, are grateful that you agreed to join us in addition to some emergency which you had related to your family but still you have uh, you know uh, accepted our request to prepon the show and we welcome you for that. Uh, welcome Asnani sir. Asnani sir uh, does not need any uh, you know introduction. He is an institution of uh, uh, investment in himself and he has written a book called uh, Way to Billionaire. In addition to that since last more than 25, more than 30 years he has been uh, teaching, he has been guiding, he has been helping investors like all of us and many of us present over here. In that journey. So, welcome, Masnani ji, uh, to our talk show. And, thank you. Uh, thank you, Vishal ji. With... Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, please continue. We will begin with the uh, mandatory question that how yeah. did you start your investment journey? I mean, uh, what were your thought process? What was your process which you... Uh, you know, uh, process and habits that you inculcated from the beginning. How did it all begin? How did the journey begin? Thank you, Vishal first of all, for giving me an opportunity to interact with uh, a lot of investors and I can see some new investors also. And it's a good initiative. I appreciate your initiative. Uh, this will help in uh, understanding the various techniques and various insights provided by different advisors and different research analysts. And this definitely gives a very different kind of perspective because the same thing when explained by different people means different to different people. Uh, so that way, this is definitely going to help. Uh, regarding my investment journey, so I started in 1988. Basically, when I completed my engineering. Uh, I joined Bharat Devi Electricals Limited. And it happened that within three, four uh, months, I had to visit to Mumbai. And there I there was a house forming ceremony. And uh, I asked the owner that, what is the cost of that flat. It was in Thane. And okay. they told that it is something about 8.5 lakhs. And that time my salary was 2,800 rupees. And uh, it was one of the best in the entire corporate sector at that time. So on the back of the envelope calculations, I found that it is almost impossible for me to purchase this flat in my lifetime. So that is how uh, I started searching for the second source of income and I landed up in pocket. Yes, we will provide a recording. Somebody is asking a question that please okay. provide recording. Uh, Dr. Avni is with patients in the clinic. Uh, definitely we are recording and it will be uploaded on our YouTube channel. So talking about your invested investment journey, sir, then uh, what did you do initially? What was the process initially? Initially, it was um, just like uh, uh, what a retail investor does. I did not have the mentor. And uh, I searched for the mentor, in fact. But in those days, uh, it was a very, in a very unconventional way. Investment was not in a systematic way, what it is being done today. And uh, there was no internet also. So I also started with uh, reading all sort of uh, newspapers. In those times, there was a very popular newspaper with the name of Financial Wizard. And then premium investments, uh, money times, and all these rupee gains. These were the papers uh, through which we, through which, uh, which I read, used to read the complete newspaper because I was very passionate and I wanted to do something very great, something like that. I also tried for the technical analysis, IPOs, and all those things. And then it happened in 91, 92. There was a big crash. And that was the time when uh, I became serious that uh, definitely this is not the way to make money. There has to be something different. And then I searched for the people who have really made big money, big money in the long term uh, for themselves or for their 
investors or for their followers, something like that. And then I came to know a name like Warren Buffet, Peter Lynch, George, Dr. George Templeton. And the very one thing was very common in these people that they were all following a fundamental analysis. So I also decided to let go for fundamental analysis and that is how I changed my track. And then it's, uh, I never looked back. Uh, guys, uh, please, can you mute yourself? Uh, if somebody is unmuting himself after I mute, then unfortunately I will have to remove him from the piece. Uh, sorry for few disturbances, sir. So, uh, sir, that is a great thing that uh, you talked about reading the books, readings, uh, you know, how some successful become, people became more successful. So, what would be your guidance? What would be your, uh, you know, suggestion? So there are a lot of, lot of uh, I am seeing a lot of young guys in here, a lot of uh, age-old veterans also are there. So first, what will be your two-line advice to the young guys, those who are starting their journey? And what will be your advice to the guys, to some of the seasoned veteran guys, who also sometimes, uh, you know, seem to make... Uh, make mistakes so um, my advice is same for all kinds of investors be it, um, someone who is starting today or who is into the market from last 30 years or 40 years guidance uh, is like this you keep on reading the books especially by the authors who have made money I keep re repeating this thing because the people who have made money will give you the real guidance. They will give you the real insights, what they have done. This is very important in the stock market. And it is not necessary that everything we should accept mm. it or we should grab it. The things which you think are matching with you or which you think have given you a success, you can accept it, else you can reject it. And there are many, many books uh, written by the authors. Uh, me. Personally, I like the books authored by Peter Lynch. So the natural choice is one up on Wall Street and beating the street. And to my knowledge, he has he has authored five books. And I have read, I have read all the five books. And it is not only that it is a uh, one read. You can keep on reading. Means I mean to say, once you have read the book, you can highlight some main points. And after two, three years, Years, five years again you go back and read those things and then you will find that there is a difference in your first reading and in your second exactly. reading exactly that's what is... i was going to say uh, yeah. sorry to interrupt you that you know uh, there are some books which i have read at a very young age at that time i could understand something very different and uh, then 10 years later when i read them then i got a different story and then later now when i'm reading that same book I am getting a different gist, different summary, different context of what was written by the author. It's yes. very natural. So, uh, I agree to your point that the same book can be written multiple, can be read multiple times. And I would add, like to add one more thing that, you know, Way to Billionaire is a great book. It teaches you from the crux for an investor uh, how to begin to what to look at, how to look at how a company operates and the whole, you know, idea of investing, the concept of investing, right from the grassroots level, it is very well explained in that book. Yeah, because the objective was like that. Uh, I think, I don't think there is any uh, very um, complex type of formula is there. Uh, the most complex formula is the compound interest formula and that we have, we all have read in class 7th or 8th. So that is the only formula which I use. And for that also, there is a shortcut, as many of you may be knowing, that is the rule of 72. So even for that formula also, you, you need not have to um, <laughs> remember. And it is, it, is, it is on the fingertips. If you tell me that if your money doubles in, or it becomes four times in six years, I can instantaneously within three, four seconds, definitely within three, four, maximum five seconds, I can tell you what is the rate of interest you have earned. So that should be the uh, 
uh, that should be the mind uh, like a businessman. So if I am getting this much of returns, when will my money double? Basically, every time you should ask if I am investing in this share, then when will my money double? When will my portfolio double? Because in the bank, you are getting about 6-7% rate of interest. So with that, your money doubles in 10 years. So definitely, if you are investing in the stock market, it should double in 4 or 5 years at the most. So that should be the kind of mentality you should have. And even with uh, the BSC sensitive index on so Nifty returns of about 14% compound returns, your money gets doubled in five years. So you should always target that when you are investing in very stock specific, then your target should be that your money should get doubled in at the most four years. Otherwise, you, you should quit the stock market and invest in ETFs, index ETF or Nifty ETF, so like that. So uh, basically, the objective of writing that book was to give a perspective to uh, new investors. Half of the book covers that why you should invest in stocks and what are the advantages. And the remaining half is for the uh, bit of experienced investors. At the same time, I have given a lot of analogies which can help you to understand uh, how the stocks move, how the portfolio can be built, or how you should look at the stocks. For example, I can give you uh, there is a there is an analogy with uh, flying a kite. I'm very sure many of you might not have heard this analogy of flying a kite with stock market. So uh, I cannot describe that in detail, but uh, it gives you a very good idea. And recently, I wrote an article on owning a truck and investing in stocks. This is again a very fantastic. Um, many similarities and differences you can make out, but there is these analogies helps you a lot in uh, in building your portfolio, in managing your portfolio. Ultimately, it is your total portfolio that gives you the returns. So have a focus on the total portfolio. So that is uh, I wanted to share regarding the way to billionaire and regarding the name why it is billionaire. Billionaire means. Uh, can anyone write in the chat box? One billion means how many rupees? Whoever writes first in the chat box, I will give them a book free. One billion means, wow. Oh, Mr. Dawal, uh, you kindly send the address to Mr. Vishal and I will send you the book. Yes, uh, one billion means 100 crores. And so the book name is Way to Billion. It is like that. How I started with 1 lakh rupees. And in 40 years, rather I should say in less than 40 years, I'm going to turn this 1 lakh to 100 crores. Uh, already 23 years have gone. And we have moved from 1 crore to 1.93 crores. There is a curated basket of stocks which is available in public domain. So that is how the name of the book came, Way to Billion. Great. Uh, jumping to my next question. Yeah, sure. What are the red flags that you see in a company, seeing which you would, uh, you know, uh, not buy a stock or sell the stock that uh, you already have in your portfolio? Some red flags, and then we'll move to some green flags. Looking at which you would, you know, think of uh, the process of uh, buying that stock or the idea that okay. Now this stock can be bought. What are the green flags and what are the red flags that uh, you identify in a company which investors should look at? See, there are there are uh, several things which I look at. Um, not only balance sheet, but also there are other things like last four or five years, how the numbers are moving. How the dividend has been given, uh, how the stock has been split, whether any bonus has been given, and how the equity is moving. So there are many, many things. And what I have learned during my this experience of more than three decades is this: if you look at the last four or five years of these numbers, this, uh, this, these are the parameters from profit and loss account, like the revenue depreciation, interest outgo. 
tax outgo and net profit, then equity capital and earnings per share and dividend. So these are the things if you if you monitor these six parameters during the last four years, you will find that each individual individual parameter has some language they are talking with each other. They are talking with each other also with themselves also there is a talk. Okay. You, know, you will be bit, getting a bit confused that what does that mean? So if I am improving year after year, so you will find that yes, I am improving what I was five years ago, I am better today. So that is what the revenue tells us. What was the revenue? Revenue today, that is comparing itself. What was the duration like this? For every parameter you have to compare. Then how this revenue is getting converted into profits. That is also very interesting. So until unless you understand that, when you understand that, then you will find that that is the quality of the management of allocating capital. How the management is allocating the resources to the various heads, how company is financing. So these are very important. This gives you an idea about the quality of the management. Many people say that quality of the management cannot be defined. Yes, it can be defined. Part of this can be defined by looking at the past performance of these parameters. This is very important. Secondly, coming to the annual report or the company presentation, there is a one-way communication from company to the investors to the shareholders. So whatever company wants to disclose, it will disclose. Okay. So there are cases where auditors give the qualifications. But that is very, very rare. So one thing is, when you are looking at the annual report, go for the auditor qualifications. That is a very important part. Secondly, you should also look for the management discussion. That also gives you a good insight. So for the first time, when I came across an annual report that was in early 90s, it was an annual report of Larsen and Tubro, and it was, 103, it was 103 pages so I was, I was, uh, I was very much perplexed how to start from where to start. I was not knowing anything at that time. But today I can tell you, within three minutes or four minutes, I am able to see, I am able to judge the annual report because I know which are the pages I have to look for. You have to look for only two three things. That's all. But then again, I said, this is a one-way communication from management to the investors to the shareholders. The best way to assess the management is the conference call. In conference call, there are a lot of analysts, research analysts who have very in-depth knowledge about the company. And they ask such peculiar and such many times such difficult questions that I have seen. I have seen that the management is not able to answer them properly. Wow. That is how you gauge the management. The same management will give you a beautiful presentation, colorful and very wonderful presentation. They will produce wonderful annual report. But when it comes to answering the research analyst questions, then it is, that is the real test of the quality of the management. So uh, I, I uh, remember I in one of all of you. Guys, we are humbled by your love, but please, please keep your uh, mics mute. We will definitely give you a chance to, uh, you know, speak and have your own question uh, to Asnani ji. But request all of you to mute because this is really, uh, really creating issue. Uh, Pintu ji, if you mute, kar dein, toh acha hoga. Or else, uh, Sahil is there. Sahil. I'll make you a co-host. Uh, please, uh, if you can mute yes, everyone yes, or anyone that is. Okay. So, my sir, uh, sorry for the disturbance again. But uh, moving to my next question. Yeah. Uh, next question is, uh, uh, you know, we already, we, you, regarding, uh, before the next question, I'll go to this uh, uh, thing in one of our uh, webinars, where you were also part of, uh, uh, you were also part of uh, this uh, webinar.
webinar where you had said that it was a con call of a symphony or something. Uh, I, I think it was you who said it, right? Or it was somebody else. Uh, in a con call of symphony, when somebody asks questions to the management, uh, then the, you know, the guy who was answering, mostly it was MD of the company. He said that there are a lot of companies in the, uh, in the BSC Sensex. And you can choose, if you're not happy with us, you can choose uh, any of them uh, with a very angry tone. That, for me, that became a red flag. Uh, and, you know, nothing against any company. But then I tried to uh, not buy any stock from that company after that issue. Uh, I don't exactly remember the name of the company, but definitely, yes, this has happened. And also, in one of the conference calls, what I read is that uh, some investor asked a question okay. related to finance. And their chief financial officer, that is CFO, okay. he said that uh, I will have to go back and uh, calculate and then I will let you know. Now, this is not accepted uh, because wow. you are a CFO. And uh, if you have come to the conference call, you should be fully prepared. So this, these things show that the management wants to hide something. It is hiding something. Or management is not has not come prepared. It is not serious about the call. And uh, these are the these are very simple things. These which you can make out even without looking at the finance that uh, you should your company should be like this or not. It is either yes or no. That's all. If you feel that you should not remain with such companies, then we can exit. Now, sir, my next question to you is that you know how important is it uh, for somebody? to invest in education about stock market? And is it really worth, you know, uh, you are also in sort of education all, uh, field also that you guide a lot of investors. Uh, some people do it with money. Some people do it through books. I also do it in some way or the other by writing articles. Uh, taking less. So is it worth, uh, worth that? So uh, <clears throat> definitely it is worth because when you are investing in a company, you are actually buying a business. And when you are buying a business, you must know what you are buying and what this company is doing and how will be the future prospects of this company. For that, you need an understanding of some basic terminology of finance from the balance sheet as well as from the profit and loss account. But definitely not very highly in-depth knowledge is not required. Uh, basically, I am in B electronics. And uh, gradually, I started acquiring the qualifications, starting with uh, ERA, that is a Equity Research Analyst. That was a that was a course designed by ICFI Hyderabad. Okay. Unfortunately, they did not get many candidates, and this course was there only for two years. So that was the that is how you come to know what is happening around the globe. What is research happening in USA, UK, and India? That like like that. Mm -hmm. And also, you, when you are focused on stock market, so be restricted to the knowledge you want to gain in stock market. For example, I will tell you, if you are interested in the stock market, then you need not have to balance the balance sheet. That is a very, uh, very intensive job and you should not bother about balancing it. That is not required in stock. So in stock market, you need to look at very, very select parameters and you should know what to do and what not to do. Like that. So uh, education is very much required. And uh, I have spent a lot of, lot of time uh, on uh, educating myself. Even today, I keep on educating myself. And uh, just two years back, I completed my PhD. And what I learned by doing PhD is stock market is more simpler than what I used to think. Already I was thinking that stock market is simple, but by doing PhD, I came to know that it is much simpler. What is to be done, as I said, what you need to do and what you need not have to do, you should be very clear when you are in the stock market. And uh, if you are educated, even if you are not an analyst, even if you are following some advisor <laughs> or some research analyst, still you need to be educated because it may not happen that that the advisor is taking you for a ride. So for that purpose also, it is required. Quick. 
सर इन द नेक्स्ट फाइव इयर्स और लॉट ऑफ कंट्रीज लॉट ऑफ एनालिस लॉट ऑफ बिग गाइज इन द वर्ल्ड ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड बैंकिंग फाइनेंस दे आर सेइंग दैट नेक्स्ट टेन इयर्स और नेक्स्ट फाइव इयर्स बिलोंग टू इंडिया सो एनी पर्टिकुलर सेक्टर्स दैट यू आर ऑप्टिमिस्टिक अबाउट एनी टू और थ्री सेक्टर्स इन पर्टिकुलर विच यू फील दैट यू नो गोइंग फॉरवर्ड विल बी डूइंग ग्रेट so uh, every individual has got his own philosophy and uh, my philosophy is very simple in the long run company share price follows the company's earnings that is the simple very simple uh, philosophy now since in the long run share price has to follow the earnings then i must see what is the visibility of the company in times to come maybe in 2 years or 3 years something like that because beyond 2 years or 3 years it is difficult to find out the visibility as sa kehte hai no ki jab big vehicle raat mein jab ja raha hai uski headlight jahan tak ja rahi hai wahi tak dikh raha hai aap jab wahan pahunchenge to aapko aur aage ka dikhega so it this is applicable in stock market also ki uh, maybe today your visibility is for 2 years or 3 years but when you reach next year you will find that the visibility has increased for further more for one year it is like this so for if you are buying a stock today it is really very difficult to say what will happen 4 years or 5 years hence or 10 years hence it is all it is all a probability i can say but as the time approaches near then you get a clear clarity or visibility so mine is basically a bottoms up approach first the company then the sector then the economy okay and i am very much focused on the company to be very honest i don't bother about the sector i don't bother about the economy as i said i am very much bothered about the my company's earnings that is the ultimate thing i will give you an example like page industries and page industries ipo came at that time now page industries is from a textile sector if you apply a pe ratio of a textile sector then you will apply a pe ratio of not more than 10 but page industry commands a pe ratio of always it has commanded I mean, most of the time it has commanded P ratio six plus. That is the difference between page industries and rest of the sector. So the same applies to the stocks. Many NBFCs might command um, price to book value of maybe two or three, but Bajaj Finance commands five. So there is there is a reason behind it. So now coming to the point, your point that how we identify the sectors, which are the sectors where we can invest every quarter. i analyze the results all the companies all the listed companies and then mm. the results which are good i keep them in my so, watch what you lag rahe so at the end of the huh? at the end of when the companies have completed declaring huh? the results so when you look at the watch list you will automatically come to know that yes this time infrastructure sector companies have done pretty well compared to the previous quarter so that is how This is a reverse process. Most of the investors, what they do is, okay, defense sector is doing well. What are the good companies from the defense sector? Let me pick. So mine is the other way. It is a reverse way. First, you have to find out which are the companies which have performed well. Then find out which are the sectors which are emerging. And then, is there any other company in that sector? Like that. So based on that, during last two three quarters, what I have observed is the infrastructure sector. these companies order book are increasing like anything and still even to date they are available at very cheap valuations but people are worried people are very um are not comfortable with infra stocks because they have seen what happened in 2008 in past right? yes yeah their experience is not that good but that is past is past you must look at what is the debt equity ratio in today's scenario and how is their balance sheet and how are their plans what is their order book most of the infrastructure companies have a order book of 2 years or 3 years so one should not very much one should not be very much worried about the future prospects like that as on date i see very good prospects for uh, most of the people you may be already knowing it defense space infrastructure these are the three um sectors and many of you may be Uh, wondering that already many of these stocks from these sectors have already doubled or tripled 
is there is still a case to buy so what matters is not the share price what matters exactly is the valuation it is not the share price if a share price is 1000 rupees it does not mean that it is rising means it is highly valued if it is 4000 it doesn't matter what i have observed is if i recommend someone to buy a share worth rupees 5000 then he is very hesitant if i ask him a share worth rupees 500 then he may consider buying 200 shares if i ask him to buy a share worth rupees 5 then all 100% of the investors are ready to buy that stock so, so uh, it, you know end of the day the what case. matters is sorry to interrupt end yeah. of the day what matters is how much you have invested and how much you are how much return you are getting on it yes not you know number of stocks is immaterial this is always this is the one point that i always tell my friends and you know those who are following me on twitter on instagram and everywhere that it does not matter how many stocks you have what matters is how much you have invested and how much return you are getting on that investment not the number of stocks please continue so what happens is because there are not many people who are ready to buy 5000 worth of share that share price comes down becomes underpriced and because there are a large number of investors who are ready to buy a share worth rupees 5 that share moves up and becomes overpriced now people are ready to buy the same share for rupees 8 but they are not ready to buy for rupees 3000 so that is fair as a retail investor you should understand this concept and you should be ready to invest in high price share totally agree sir uh, one last question yes, uh, before we open the mic to our audience I'm sorry, we have uh, already, we are near or we are almost uh, uh, at the end of our show. But one small question, which is not a small question, actually, emotional intelligence. So how do you control your emotions while investing in stock market? The I, I have saved the best question for the last to keep you, you know, with us for two, three more minutes. So... Uh... It is, the answer is very simple. So <laughs> why I am taking so much time is because you said two, three minutes. For me, it is only a 10 second answer. <laughs> <laughs> Once you know the worth of the stock, then emotions have no meaning. It is like this. You have a, means, uh, if the price of gold is, suppose 8,000 rupees per gram. Oh, for that, some man. reason, oh, it so goes so down. That. It goes down to 5,000 rupees oh, per gram. But I give you an assurance, it, it is worth 8,000 8, rupees per gram. Then so what you will do is, if it is 5,000 rupees, you will buy more. So that gives you a confidence. That gives you a control over your emotions. So to control your emotions, you have to be very rational. You must know the worth of the stock every time. If someone tells you that Reliance share is 2600, then ask him how much it is. I give you 100% guarantee that the answer will be 2600 rupees. What he is saying is price. What you are asking is worth. Worth of the stock is different from the price of the stock. So, uh, uh, one thing is that. Secondly, the rationality, the logic. At the time of COVID, means when it was it was very near to the bottom. When the market was very near to the bottom, there were few days when the crude was negative. So, what you tell me, you or pesa me, you have seen such condition. So simple. The message was very simple, very logical. Go and buy the shares whose raw material is derived from crude, like all these polyethylene um, companies. Polyplex, uh, Cosmofilms. Yeah, Polyplex, Cosmofilms, all these polyfilm type of companies. Uh, Uflex. And then uh, footwares like Relaxo. And if you go back and see the prices, they are multiplied by three times, four times. So simple logic. So that is how the emotions come in the picture. There you have to apply the logic as the rational. Say that the whole world is coming to an end. Do you feel that the, from 
maybe from six months from uh, now, no one is going to wear the footwear made by Relaxo. Is it? Is it like that? It's so simple. That's a great, great, great round of uh, question and answers from you, sir. We really thank you for coming. And uh, one or two questions uh, that uh, we would take from audience. If it is okay, uh, if you can spare a few minutes, otherwise we can end the show over here, sir. No, no, I, I, I welcome, always I welcome the questions. Uh, one question from Mr. Abdul from Bahrain is that, uh, you know, how to know worth of stocks? Okay, Mr. Abdul, uh, you can uh, see maybe you did not join. There was a, uh, the question has already been answered uh, by sir in the beginning. But sir, uh, in one line, if you would like to answer, Mr. Abdul. Yeah, so uh, there is no straight forward formula to find the worth of the stock. Definitely, if there is, if there is some formula, then the stock market will come to an end. There, there won't be any fluctuations in uh, share price because everyone knows the worth of the stock. So it is. it involves a lot of subjectivity and a lot of objectivity also. Definitely, there are there are things like cash flow analysis and all those things being uh, said by the experts. That is one uh, way. But technically, it is not applicable. If you try and you will find out, find out that uh, discounting the all future cash flows to the present value, even a difference of 0.1% in the discount value, if you if you if you discount rate, can make a huge difference to the uh, <laughs> So what we do is since it is very difficult to find out what is the what is the life of the company. If you want to know the worth of the company, then you have to find the life of the lifespan of the company. Lifespan of the company is reducing very fast. Uh, madam, uh, unbelievable. So, uh, what we do is, I use a PEG ratio. PEG ratio is a is a is a technique which is said to be used by Peter Lynch. And in fact, in his book, he has used a lot of time PEG ratio. That is PE to growth. Now, what is this PE to growth? How fast the company is growing? Faster the company is growing, I am ready to give higher the PE ratio. It is something like that. So if slow is the PE ratio, uh, slow is the growth of the uh, company, then slow should be the PE ratio. So in fact, if a company is growing at the rate of 40%, then you should be ready to give a PE ratio of 40 or 50. If a company is growing at the rate of 70% per annum, you should be ready to give a PE of 80 or 90. It's something like that. But then you should be very, very sure that the company will continue to grow at this rate at least for the next two years. So that is how you decide the uh, worth of the stock. That is how I use this uh, technique. And I'm using this technique from last more than 25 years. Of course, I have modified a lot of things what uh, Mr. Peter Lynch um, uses. Because in terms of the US market, the PG ratio value is definitely, it is way different. Uh, compared to what we should use in India. In US market, there are very few companies which can grow at the rate of 40% plus. But in India, there are not many companies which are growing at the rate of 30% or 40%. Uh, in India, uh, they say that the investable, market, in, investable basket of companies in, in US is big. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the growth rate of a lot of companies is not as big. That is what they say. And yeah. it is uh, vice versa in India. Yeah. Uh, next question is, you know, uh, this is about your book, sir. Whether the book is revised edition recently, Mr. Jayanti wants to know. Miss Jayanti wants to know. Okay. So, uh, that book is, no, there is no revised version. And uh, the, the matter what I have covered in the book is evergreen. Of course, uh, I have learned many more things during these last eight years. That book was published in 2015. Uh, definitely, if given a chance, I would like to add two, three chapters more in that book. But uh, no, revised edition is not there. Uh, Ms. Preeti is asking how to determine how much to buy up for a particular stocks. This is general calculation you have. Means uh, in your portfolio, one particular stock can be Okay. Uh, 
So it is like this. Uh, maybe uh, uh, I don't know uh, how many of you would be able to understand this thing. This is a very simple thing. If the stock rises, how much I will gain? And if the stock falls, how much I will lose? So you have to make a balance. If the stock falls by, suppose there is a stock which is a high flag, which is which is likely to grow at the rate of fifty percent per annum. But if there is something something drastic happens, then that stock may fall down by fifty percent also. I hope you are able to get my point. Yeah. So if it is it falls by fifty percent. I will give you an example. Suppose that stock you have kept a weightage of 10% and the stock falls by 50%. Then to the total portfolio, you will lose 5%. 5% of your total portfolio will be down. And if that stock, if you have a weightage of say only 1%, and if it, that share falls by 50%, then your impact on your portfolio would be only 0.5%. So how much you are ready to bear the loss? That decides how much should be the weightage. But as a thumb rule, I will tell you, your minimum weightage should be 3% and maximum should be 8%. In between, between 3% to 8%. If the stock is risky, have a weightage of 3%. If, if a stock, suppose there is a stock like Infosys, TCS, or HDFC Bank, ICIC Bank, this you can go up to 7%, 8% like this. I'm not, I'm not recommending the stocks. I'm just giving an example that these are the old companies, big companies, and these are not growing at very fast rates. So you can give it, but they are very really stable. So you can give a higher weightage. But there are companies which are very really small, suppose whose market cap is 1000 crores, and that company uh, is growing very fast. So you should keep a weightage of 3% or at the most 4%. Rest depends on your risk taking capacity. If you want to go for higher uh, weightage also. Why I am smiling is because all the companies that you name are close to six, seven, eight percent in my portfolio. <laughs> okay. Uh, effect of AI in evaluating worth of stocks and perils of for retail investor. Wow. <laughs> this is a different question. That with the help of AI, can we evaluate the stock? And, uh, you know, perils for a retail investor of AI. So threats that a uh, retail investor will have. Because of AI. Uh, again, I will give you an example of COVID only. So, if you apply AI, at the time of COVID, AI will tell you that go and buy these shares. So, that is not a secret. We all knew that this is the time to buy. But what is required is the courage to buy. AI cannot give you that courage. It is as simple as that. <laughs> Very true, sir. Uh, P versus candle. There's a question saying that uh, uh, P versus candle. I mean, so I think uh, you are in a better position to answer this. <laughs> so <laughs> the question, what I understood is fundamental versus technical. So I personally give equal or a little more advanced in my happy candles number. Uh, fundamentals cover fifty one percent and technicals cover forty nine percent. So that is my formula P for P versus candle. I hope I answered you. So it is 5149 for me. But okay, that additional 2% is for fundamentals. My question ka answer diya usse, tabhi maine band kar diya usse. Shit. Atul ji, maine bola ke P versus candle, technical, fundamental. Main personally 51% ahmiyat deta hoon. Fundamental score forty nine percent in my formula of happy candles number. It is fifty nine for technical, uh, forty nine for technicals and fifty one for fundamental. Thank you, sir. And for Asnani ji, it is hundred percent fundamental. No, uh, I use hundred percent. Right? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, yes, yes. I don't uh, use any technicals. Uh, one more thing, uh, one more input I would like to give you, which I forgot, which is very important. I don't. Look at TV. If you ask me that someone such, such and such person was saying like that this, was my next. Uh, I, that is something I, next I was going to say. I may not be able to recall who is that person, who is that gentleman. So I don't watch TV, and uh, I am interested. Of course, there are some good interviews by the management uh, on television. 
that I'm interested, but all those things are available on internet. And bscindia.com, that is the website of Bombay Stock Exchange, is more than enough. There is so much of material and so much of related and very concerned and very insightful material available that that itself I am not able to complete it. Of course, being a um, uh, research analyst, there are many companies in my uh, watch list, so I have to look for many, many companies. But as a retail investor, you might be having 18 or 20 stocks. So for that, bscindia.com, it is free and most reliable resource. Wonderful resource. Great, sir. It was fantastic having you, sir, today. Uh, we appreciate you from the bottoms of our heart that despite difficult uh, situation at your end, I will not reveal over here. Uh, you are with us. We again thank you for being with us. And uh, if uh, you would like to answer one or two questions more or we can sure. end uh, the show here. Sir, I have one question. Uh, I have one question related to uh, stock uh, uh, holding uh, position. I will drive live. So, suppose uh, I have uh, 3 lakh rupees and what I do, I do what I do, I do, hello? Yes, tell me, tell me, sir. Yes, I do a chart and I see how the uptrend is, stock and trend line breakout, but I uh, mean, suppose I have some money around like 5 lakh or 10 lakh rupees, uh, uh, which I ha have. So, what I do, I do not buy uh, lump, uh, lump sum quantity. What I do, I buy 30 share or 40 share only. So, uh, just I want to know, is this better that I buy? Th because where, what happens when it goes upward? So, uh, after some profit, uh, suppose 20%, 30% I uh, sell it. And uh, when it sometimes fall, so I keep it because uh, the quantity are small. But shares are good. So in this way, I have a number of shares, like around 40, 50 shares, because I buy a small quantity and of good companies. So my position uh, stock holding number of stocks are increased to uh, around 50 to 60. So is this good way of uh, portfolio management? Or because what happened whenever I see the chart, I see something. Uh, uh, so, I have to say that the stock, the number of stock is managed. Because day by day, day by day, there is no stock in the chart. There is no breakout, there is no breakout. So, how to manage? How to manage psychologically? Sir, I have to say that the stock is technical analysis. Am I correct? Sir, sir, sir. मतलब फंडामेंटली तो है ही सही उस शेयरों में लेकिन टेक्निकली भी देखता हूँ कि ब्रेकआउट आ गया है जैसे तो अपन अभी मुझे पता है ब्रेकआउट आया मतलब वो क्या होता है सब ब्रेकआउट पे डर भी लगता है शेयर बाय करने में कभी रिवर्स हो गया तो अपने तो इसलिए मैं क्या कहता हूँ थर्टी शेयर ही खरीदता no, no, courage is not because I don't stop loss. No, no. You said that you are only fundamental stocks in the breakout, right? Yes, fundamental and the other breakout. But sometimes... No, no. Listen to the answer. You are fundamental, right? Yes, sir. Say it. Yes. You are fundamental. Yes, yes. You are fundamental. After that, you are technical breakout. Yes, yes. तो जब कोई शेयर फंडामेंटली साउंड है, तो उसमें आपको कॉन्फिडेंस क्यों नहीं आता है? आप तीस शेयर क्यों खरीदते हैं? तीन सौ क्यों नहीं खरीदते हैं? इसका मतलब आपको कॉन्फिडेंस नहीं है। 
हाँ सर मतलब पूरा कॉन्फिडेंस नहीं आप शेयर मार्केट सर क्या है मार्केट बहुत वॉलेटाइल होता है मैंने पहले भी बीच में देखा था कोई भी न्यूज आती है ना तो सीधे अपना कोई भी पोर्टफोलियो है ना वो सीधे बीस परसेंट दिखता है अगर मैंने आज दस लाख डाल रखे हैं तो सीधे एक, एक या दो लाख रुपए माइनस दिखता है क्योंकि वो तब कोई भी शेयर फंडामेंटल हो टेक्निकल हो डू नॉट एब्जॉर्व द लॉसेस तो उस चक्कर में मैंने देखा है कि कम क्वांटिटी में बाय करता हूँ लेकिन मेरे नंबर ऑफ स्टॉक बहुत बढ़ गए हैं मैं आपको बता दूँ आप बेसिकली प्रॉब्लम क्या है आप जो शेयर खरीदते हैं उसमें आपको बहुत ज्यादा कॉन्फिडेंस नहीं है आप फंडामेंटल तो देख लेते हैं लेकिन जब वो शेयर नीचे आने लगता है तो आप आप बोलते हैं कि उसको आप रख लेते हैं ऐसे करके आपके पास बहुत सारे इकट्ठे हो गए अब इसमें दो बातें एक तो ये है कि फंडामेंटल स्ट्रॉन्ग होने के बावजूद भी आपने बहुत कम शेयर खरीदे इसका मतलब आपको कॉन्फिडेंस नहीं है राइट हम्म और उसके बाद जब वो शेयर गिर गया तो आपने उसको सेल नहीं किया आपने खरीदा टेक्निकल बेसिस पे था लेकिन जब वो गिर गया और आपका टेक्निकल उस पर चला नहीं तो आपने उसको सेल नहीं किया तो वहां पे भी आपको कॉन्फिडेंस नहीं है आपको फंडामेंटल में भी कॉन्फिडेंस नहीं है टेक्निकल में भी कॉन्फिडेंस नहीं है अब तीसरी बात आप उसमें मिक्स कर रहे हैं तो आप फंडामेंटल पे शेयर खरीदते हैं तो वो हमेशा मीडियम टू लॉन्ग टर्म होता है कम से कम दो साल तीन साल ऐसा पीरियड होना चाहिए उसका लेकिन मार्केट के साथ अगर कोई स्टॉक गिर रहा है और आप उसमें अगर डरे आते हैं तो इसका मतलब है कि आप लॉन्ग टर्म परस्पेक्टिव आपका नहीं है देखिए एक चीज को आप समझिए आज की डेट में अगर मार्केट हजार पॉइंट गिरता है तो लगभग लगभग आपके पोर्टफोलियो के सारे शेयर नीचे गिरेंगे वो चाहे फंडामेंटली स्ट्रांग है या नहीं है सब गिरेंगे तो शॉर्ट टर्म में क्या होता है सारे स्टॉक जो है मार्केट को फॉलो करते हैं लेकिन जैसे जैसे टाइम पीरियड बढ़ता जाता है शेयर प्राइस जो है उसकी ईपीएस को उसकी अर्निंग्स को फॉलो करते हैं मार्केट को तो सिर्फ शॉर्ट टर्म में फॉलो करते हैं लेकिन लॉन्ग टर्म में वो अर्निंग्स को फॉलो करते हैं इस चीज को आपको समझना होगा जैसे जैसे आप टाइम पीरियड बढ़ाएंगे शेयर प्राइस अर्निंग्स को फॉलो करता है मार्केट को नहीं करेगा तो, तो जो शॉर्ट टर्म इन्वेस्टर्स होते हैं उनके लिए मार्केट की बहुत ज्यादा अहमियत है कि आज मार्केट कहाँ जाएगा वो शॉर्ट टर्म इन्वेस्टर्स है लेकिन जो लॉन्ग टर्म इन्वेस्टर्स होते हैं उनको मार्केट से कोई लेना देना नहीं है उनको मार्केट से सिर्फ यही लेना देना होता है कि मार्केट अगर बहुत गिर जाए तो उसमें से आप अंडर वैल्यूड स्टॉक्स खरीदो और मार्केट बहुत ज्यादा बढ़ जाए तो ओवर वैल्यूड स्टॉक्स को सेल कर दो मार्केट जब गिरता है तो मुझे बहुत खुशी होती है क्योंकि मेरे पास अपॉर्चुनिटी आती है कि मैं अच्छे शेयर्स कम प्राइस पे अंडर वैल्यूड प्राइस पे खरीद सकता हूँ ऐसा ऐसा ये मेंटेलिटी होनी चाहिए अगर आप लॉन्ग टर्म इन्वेस्टर्स है तो आपको अपनी स्ट्रेटेजी थोड़ी सी डिफाइन करनी पड़ेगी कि आप लॉन्ग टर्म है कि शॉर्ट टर्म से आपसे आपको एक्ट करना पड़ेगा ये मेरा है। राजेंद्र भाई आप एक लाइन है कि राह पकड़ तू एक चला चल पा जाएगा मधुशाला तो एक राह पकड़ो और अगर टेक्निकल टेक्निकल के बेस पे आप खरीदते हो तो स्टॉप लॉस लगाओ फंडामेंटल okay. के बेस पे खरीदते हो तो फंडामेंटल उसको अच्छी तरह स्टडी करो और फिर उसको खरीद के बोल जाओ दो तीन साल के लिए कम से कम जैसे सर ने बोला था ओके सर ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू लॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चन सर How to determine the exact risk levels oh, of a stock? How to determine the exact yeah, risk level of stocks? What parameters to watch out of out for, please? Risk? How does it look like? That, like, if any company, if everything is normal, and some company is going to cut its dividend, that is. अब जैसे इन्होंने विशाल जी ने बोला कि रेड फ्लैग कि डिविडेंड कम क्यों कर दिया था डिविडेंड क्या होता है एक डिविडेंड इज द ओनली मनी व्हिच फ्लोस फ्रॉम द कंपनी टू द शेयर होल्डर्स बोनस में कोई पैसा फ्लो नहीं होता है स्टॉक स्प्लिट में भी कोई पैसा फ्लो नहीं होता तो इसलिए देयर आर मेनी कंपनीज व्हिच कीप ऑन गिविंग बोनस शेयर्स एंड स्टॉक स्प्लिट उनके शेयर ₹3 ₹4 हो गए फिर भी वो स्प्लिट करते रहते हैं देयर इज नो नीड इट इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड तो दैट इज अगेन अ रिस्क Means that, that is again a risk factor. कोई कंपनी का शेयर पचास रुपए चल रहा है और आप उसको वन इंस्टू टेन में स्प्लिट कर रहे हैं दैट इज अक्टर बी वेरी केयरफुल्ट वट इज द इंटेंशन ऑफ द कंपनी तो 
there are also there are very really special type of risk factors which i would like to mention here sometimes what happens is your company is fundamentally sound everything is going fine so your stock is outperforming the market market 10% se padta hai aapka stock 15% se padta hai kya hota hai ek bar market agar aisa stable ho jata hai market is stable and your stock is leaving that market मतलब मार्केट मार्केट इज स्टेबल एंड योर स्टॉक इज डाउन बाय 2% 3% 5% 7% इफ इट कम्स टू 8% और 10% देन दैट इज अ वेरी दैट इज नॉट अ वेरी फेवरेबल साइन देयर इज समथिंग व्हिच यू आर मिसिंग देयर इज समथिंग व्हिच यू आर नॉट नोइंग बट देयर आर इनसाइडर्स हु नो इट रिसेंटली एंड दिस कीप्स हैपनिंग विद मी ऑलमोस्ट वन स्टॉक एवरी 2 इयर्स इट हैपेंस लाइक दिस सो आई Uh, because company is not disclosing everything so um, it happened last year in a chemical uh, company that it's it was coming up with a very big project and unfortunately the price of the product of that chemical kept on falling and that was not disclosed and we also didn't come to know that was our fault and the share price fell by about 16 to 17% with respect to the market of course that is a different thing that we were already sitting on profits of about 350% but that should not be the reason to be so so much in comfort zone. so agar aapka stock market chhod ke niche aa raha hai ye bhi ek bahut bada red flag hai aap pata kariye ki what is happening or and if you are not able to find out then reduce the weightage or better exit you should have a very comfortable sleep koi sa bhi stock aapko agar uncomfortable kar raha hai sell it क्वेश्चन यही था कि कुछ और था आई थिंक आई थिंक यू आंसर्ड द क्वेश्चन आई थिंक नाउ देर आर नो मोर क्वेश्चन इफ एनीबडी हैज एनी क्वेश्चन वी हैव ग्रेट अपॉर्चुनिटी टू हैव असनानी जी एंड यू नो इट इज नाउ मोर देन थर्टी मिनिट्स और क्लोज टू थर्टी मिनिट्स ओवर टाइम सो वील आई ऑल्सो हैव टू गिव हिम परमिशन हाई लक्ष्मी ऑलिबल रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी हो गई या इलेक्ट्रिक वहीकल्स हो गया तो इनका इंडिया में इज इट राइट टाइम टू इन्वेस्ट या ऑलरेडी टाइम निकल गया है गुड कंपनीज गुड सेक्टर इन दैट एरिया ए आई रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी एंड इलेक्ट्रिक वहीकल्स ए आई बट इंडिया के हिसाब से बोल but the us case of say yes there are already there are good companies in us which uh, i don't have much idea um because i am not tracking the us companies but definitely hum jab paper se padhte hain to humko aisa samajh mein aata hai ki uh, kuch kam few companies are doing very well and kuch jo chips banate hain nvidia wo bhi bahut acha perform kar rahi hai there are other companies also uh but abhi india mein we are using ai but uh, हम ए को प्रोड्यूस जनरेट नहीं कर रहे हैं इंडिया में तो वो अभी वो अभी आया नहीं है स्टेज हमारे यहाँ कमिंग टू दीज इज इज ए डिफरेंट बॉल गेम इट इज अ टोटली डिफरेंट बॉल गेम यू माइट हैव ऑब्जर्व दैट देर इज अ कंपनी विद द नेम ऑफ ऑलेक्ट्रा अभी ऑलेक्ट्रा का नाम आज से दो साल तीन साल पहले शायद किसी ने सुनना नहीं होगा बिकॉज इट इज नॉट अ काइंड ऑफ ए इंटरनल कंपनी इंजिन ये वो लोग नहीं बनाते हैं जैसा एंड देन ओला नो वन एवर थॉट दैट ओला विल कम एंड डिस्टर्ब द मार्केट टू व्हीलर्स so there will be great surprises and it is very difficult to find out at early stage that what is going to happen there are some companies which are into the manufacturing of electric vehicle components those companies as on date have um, have orders for 10 years even for 15 years but who has seen 15 years maybe next year or maybe within 6 months some other company comes with a innovative technology which 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 costs half the cost of this company so be very careful in case of ev space uh, yes there is a potential but it is equally difficult to find out which companies to bet upon 
because it is a something new and it is not a it is basically a software if you aap mere se agar puche ki what is ev to main bolunga ki aap kitna acha software bana sakte hain us car ko move karne ke liye depends on that like tesla is master hmm um we all know yes. that yeah aap andar se tesla ko aap dekhenge to usme kuch dikhta nahi hai kuch hai kya isme karna kya hai isme so it is all software so, all software yeah so um, it is totally different ball game matlab we bhi jaise even hamare india mein bhi hum dekhenge the hero motor top bajaj auto ye log two wheelers mein abhi bhi struggle kar rahe hain but then there are there is a company like ola which is doing wonderfully well so it is not necessary ye jo log ic engines banate the wo log isme bhi successful honge utne hi successful honge i doubt it. there abhi aur bhi kuch surprises aane wale hain जो की काफी जिन्होंने जो है चैट जीपीटी का वो इंडिया आए थे वो कुछ बोल के गए और उनको ट्वीट करके दिया था जवाब टेक महिंद्रा के सीईओ ने क्योंकि वी आर एक्सेप्टिंग द चैलेंज आई डोंट नो हाउ मच दे विल बी सक्सेसफुल इन दैट बट यू कैन कीप दैट नेम इन योर लिस्ट ऑफ एंटिटीज एंड टाटा अबाउट द रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी तो आई थिंक इंडिया इज द बेस्ट लाइक तो सबसे सही सेक्टर वही होगा इंडिया में यस यस आई एग्री विद यू एंड गवर्नमेंट हैज स्पेशली इन विंड एनर्जी government has many changes during last 6 months in the, i think in january or february lot of uh, the way tender is made and how the tender is accepted and all those things and the target till 2030 that has been changed totally and jo uh, indian government ka jo target hai that is way above the capacity of the indian wind turbine generator manufacturers so it is a great opportunity not only for wind turbine uh, generator uh, manufacturers but also for the associated companies like the crane providers for example and giving it. so there is a good opportunity and among the listed space there are i think there are only two three companies um but those one of them the i would like to say that the management i am not happy and the other one is highly debted and highly the equity is also highly bloated so but definitely there is a there is a great opportunity in the sector wind energy okay so wind and i think as well as solar solar energy yeah solar energy also there is an opportunity and uh, in that space already there are uh not uh, like in reliance they are focusing too much on solar energy also and also this adani then there is a tata power and there are other some listed unlisted companies are also there they are doing good job in solar there are also Thank companies you. which are manufacturing the uh, components for this solar power equipment thank you yeah so sir if i am allowed to add just my two cents into this uh, yeah, this sure. is double button yeah okay i'll i'll start with the first thing so you already named i'm sorry i couldn't see the name because i'm on the phone you 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 mentioned the new age technologies right one sector which you should focus now is going to be the integrated uh, circuit manufacturers or the design led manufacturers so there are overall six listed companies in that segment is this moment of time the top much one is the kane technology k y n e s which popped up from 400 or 500 rupees to almost 2000 rupees now within a span of 3 months not more than that we have scient drm which is a list recent listing then we have access care avalon and multiple others i mean you can research in this segment see india yes. has always yes. been pretty good as far as bulk manufacturing is concerned be it electronics be it uh, textile or be it pharmaceutical like we are the pharmacy of the entire world right if it comes to the future that we will be replacing china as far as bulk manufacturing of electronics is concerned integrated design led manufacturing is going to be one sector which is unbeatable and even if we don't replace china consider that we are going to ban the imports of electronics sooner than later 
this integrated design manufacturer see these guys are making the ICs if anybody understand the electronics right if you are making the IC these ICs are going to be used into any electronics starting from your refrigerator to your computer we are not talking about semiconductors here we are talking about those circuits which are we ideally called as a motherboard okay so this IC manufacturers are a, uh, you know they are really big market especially for India I would say Okay, that's one sector which was not mentioned as a part of the new age technology. So I just wanted to mention that. Keep it, keep an eye on it. Second thing I would like to say is, so forget about AI because it it requires such a huge investment. So if anybody wants to know the number that is behind this Chat GPT or Open AI, see they invested I think near to hundred million dollars just to prepare the computers which are actually powering the Chat GPT overall. And they are keep investing it. It it takes a forty thousand dollars worth of a chip, one chip of Nvidia company, which is a U.S. listed company, and they have deployed nearly ten thousand such chips in order to create the computer, which is actually backing the Chat GPT Open AI. In India, that capital intensive expenditure is not feasible. So don't don't focus on that. And even if we come up with one, we don't want to bring another Chat GPT. There is already a market for that. So forget about it. Yeah, we are we are far 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 behind, and we will not reaching there any any time soon. Okay, coming to the uh, the alternative energy. Okay, uh, that's how we term it actually, the renewable energy. I would say, I think I'm sorry guys, I'm I'm pretty new to this forum, so I don't recollect anybody's name. So I I'm sorry, but the gentleman who was mentioning about all the companies, sir. I, I totally agree with you. There are there are companies which are actually contributing to the ancillary, and when we say ancillary, so let's say for example, Inox Wind, they have their uh, wind power uh, generation company, but Inox also listed one of their and another company which I don't exactly recollect at this moment of time, which somewhere trades near to seventy to eighty rupees right now. That company is the only company which is doing the servicing of the wind turbine, and it's the only listed company in India. So, if you really wanted to uh, bet on the wind energy for next ten years, maybe it's the right bet for you at this moment of time. Another thing that you should consider: see, Boro Renew. If somebody has really played it in 2021 to 2022, they have made some really good money, right? In the solar energy, when everybody was chiming on the solar energy. One thing that nobody is actually considering, and you should really do a research about that. See, India has been the pioneer of solar energy and the renewable energy overall across the globe. And between two, uh, you know, what we call it, the Cancer and the other one. So, equators between two equators of the Earth, I would say, uh, in there are hundred countries which are led by India. That is something called I, I I'll, I'll search the name for that and ping it into the group as well. There is something solar called Alliance. a quad. Yeah, perfect. The Solar Alliance. And India is the pioneer leader of that. Okay, if you term it this way, all the companies you know who are investing into solar energy, there is one thing which is common and which and in which I would say India has a monopoly. It's transmission line. See, practically in India, if you consider the transmission cables like KEI, uh, I would say yeah, KEI, uh, and uh, I would say Kalpataru Power, and uh, there is one more. uh it, the name starts with an s but i skipper skipper so there are three companies kei energy um kalpataru power and skipper these three companies are actually making the transmission towers and then there are companies like finolex cable and i think there is one more so there are a couple of companies uh, bharat wires i i mean i'm not going in a specific details but let's talk about the concept so these are the companies which are making the transmission equipment irrespective of which country is investing into the solar energy or the wind power energy every company will have to establish their own transmission line and in this segment india is having a sort of not monopoly but a monopolistic situation wherein we are one of the market leaders of setting up the transmission line so if you consider if you wanted to search the history about it i think uh, the company in the goenka group i i always get confused between the kei uh, energy and the another one but are we in prices Sorry, RPG Enterprises. No, no, RPG Enterprises is the parent company. There is one company in that KEC International. Yeah, sorry, my bad. KEI is the one which makes the cable, and KEC International is the one which has the transmission line. I'm sorry, I get confused between the names. So, you should 
if you if you check the history of these international and kalpataru power they are having the transnational lines in afghanistan part of the euro part of africa everywhere the only reason why i am mentioning this fact is we are having a sort of a monopolistic situation as far as transnational line setup is concerned okay so whichever is the country which is going to set up their renewable energy be it a wind energy or a solar energy they will be dependent upon us to set up their transmission line and the transmission cables as well so if you do not want to directly play on the uh, renewable energy play on the proxy mm-hmm. proxies of the transmission cables and the transmission uh, tower manufacturer this is going to be a really good bet and if i just give you an example i think case international or forget give me case international KEI Global, I would say. KEI used to trade somewhere near to 600 rupees during the Corona time period. Now it is near to 3,000 rupees. It's more than five times. Which company? I think KEI. It's a cable manufacturer. It was 300 rupees. It was 300 rupees. Yeah, 300. I mean, I, when I I touched it for the first time, it was 600. So, so it is. Much. Yeah, kindly keep it short because already we are running. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. 45 I'm sorry. minutes I'm late and. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, Dawal. Ah, uh, uh, thank you. Yeah. I, I think uh, we get your gist. You are uh, more bullish on uh, renewable energy, and that to that there are ancillaries, like in auto industry there are ancillaries of Maruti, right. like you know, Asai Songwon, Asai Glass. Similarly, you are fo- you say that as India is in a pole position with renewable level energy, we should also focus on. the companies that are ancillaries in the sector sector yeah a yeah, very good point point taken and uh, uh, i would like to add something yes sir the uh, in the eds yes he is right but we are in india we are not manufacturing ics we are importing them we are only manufacturing the pcbs and uh, as you have rightly pointed out there are many companies which are pretty small whose turnover is less than 500 rupees crores yeah and those companies and and those companies have all of a sudden their prospects have improved a lot and presently the total market at a global market uh, we india is serving only 1% or 1.25% of that total global market so even if we go by the population we have the right to opt at least for the 7% and the very interesting part is that all these companies are these were set up in 90s 80s or 90s so they have a lot of experience management and they know how to do it and what to do it and as as recently government just given a hint that we want to uh, stop the import of laptops then these companies will come into the picture and presently all these companies are filled with orders you go through their um, this conference call you will find such a high level of confidence then you will be many a times you will be confused that whether, whether it is a confidence or over confidence but then we should be very very careful because these companies are ruling at a p ratio of 70 or 80 and at times 100 also so it is not a, a retail investors can enter into these stocks but with very very be very very careful because simply a one change in strategy of the government can make or break the prospects of that those companies it is like uh, mercedes is going at a speed of 400 yeah and then you know one small bump can yes make it and, uh, uh, regarding the transmission line uh, i have a different opinion because there is a good prospect for uh, solar and wind energy because the government is focusing on that and government has said that we don't want to focus on uh, thermal power plants that is there the growth rate of growth of uh, power sector in renewable uh, energy sector will be very high but as far as the transmission lines is concerned already the major transmission line structure network is in place so you have to only um, lay a transmission Generate line from the power. solar point to the main grid that's all so that is not a big thing and that is also that does not involves a lot of technology because already there are many companies and some have already closed down like jyoti structures was a very jyoti big structure structure. exactly the time i was going to take yeah so but now it is no more into the um, game 
and also these KEs International they have uh, they have diversified into the solar and also into the civil construction also because they were not getting enough orders for transmission lines but now the situation is pretty better uh, but the rate of growth will not be that high as compared to the WTGs. But EDS, yes, you pointed very well. EDS sector is uh, exceptionally good prospects. Uh, I think it is time to close. Already we are Sir, we thank you a lot. I mean, you have given us 44 minutes more than schedule. Thank you very much. thankful to all of you and uh, especially to Vishal ji. You know, uh, idea float kiya and uh, I accepted it. And this is the first time ever that I have stepped uh, uh, to uh, shoot by video shoot by. Uh, thank you very much. And this gives uh, your investors a lot of uh, different kind of perspective. What you heard today is my perspective or this was a perspective, perspective that so even I respect uh, and I learned Shaji, from Asnani ji a lot. And I hope that yes, sir, you will grace us with many more interviews in future uh, with some specific topics or similar topics and uh, help our audiences. Yeah. It was a pleasure having you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you once again and to all the audience for uh, being with us uh, till such time quarter to 11 is there. Uh, thank you. And I, I, I find that some are from outside also. Uh, outside means outside the country. Uh, that I really like it. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, call thank it you. a day. Thank you very yeah. much. Thanks. And hope thank to see you. you sometime again on sure, uh, sure. talk show. Yeah. Taking the stock. Thank you.